How's it going boys and girls, my name is Kawi and welcome back to the Care Club. In today's video, we're going to dive into Roblox Studio again to learn some coding fundamentals because I want to have a change of pace from just building stuff. So we're going to talk about how to use variables inside of the studio and give you an explanation of what it is and how you can use it. I'm only going to talk about one specific topic because the coding subject by itself is really really big and it can be very overwhelming. So we're going to take this slow and learn one subject one at a time. If you're a beginner and you want to learn more about making games and studio from the ground up, make sure to subscribe to this channel so you won't miss any of my content. And with that, let's get started. So the first thing we'll do is start a fresh project on a base plate. I'm not going to go through any of the basics of navigations and whatnot. I made a crash course video not too long ago that covers all the essential concepts that you need in order for you to use Roblox Studio. If that is what you need, check out this video here and when you're finished with that, come back to this video. So when you're ready, we're going to create our first script. So in the explorer window, right click on workspace and then select insert object. You're going to get a drop down menu with a bunch of stuff on it. What you want is to filter out everything and look for the word script. This is going to add a script directly below workspace. You'll know that you have done it right when there is this blank page opened up for you. So once you have this blank page open, we can start scripting. So the first line of code that I'm going to get you guys to do is to create a variable called local x. And that's it. That's all you type in this first line of code. I don't want to make it any more complicated than this because there is a lot of stuff happening here that you're not seeing. So be prepared that there's going to be a lot of explanation here. Okay, so here's the thing. A common problem for beginner developer is that they assume they know how to code just because it made sense in a tutorial they saw on YouTube. So they copy the code, use it for themselves, and they simply just accept that it works without ever understanding why it works. So when it comes to making their own games, they'll have problems making the features they want, and there is no tutorials that will show them how to make it, and they give up. Because their entire foundation is based on copying other people's code and not writing their own code. So I just want to put that out there. If you want to be a competent developer, then you have to understand every aspect of the code and not just knowing where to find the code. So let's start dissecting what is happening here in this two simple word. We'll start with the word local. It is highlighted in blue because this is what we called a reserved keyword. What this means is that this word has a purpose and a specific meaning for the computer. It also means that we cannot just use this word casually everywhere. It must be used in a proper context. And we will get to how to use this in just a bit. The next component is the letter X, which is called a variable. A variable is basically a placeholder for a piece of information. So for example, what is your name? And my response would be Kawi. So the question with a keyword name is the variable and the answer that I've given you, Kawi, is the information. To give you a better idea what I'm talking about, you'll notice that a lot of games have coins, cash, tickets, or, or money. These are all variables, a placeholder for the number of coins you have in the game. And without these variables, you're not going to have any way to track how many coins you have in the game. So whenever we want a piece of information to be stored, we want to use a variable to keep track of them so that the players will know how much coins they have. And to do that, we write local X, local coins, local cash, or whatever name that you want to use. So for practice, get into the habits of seeing your game in terms of variables. For example, local weapon name local weapon minimum damage, local weapon maximum damage, stuff like that. However, the variable by itself is completely useless, not until we give it some useful information. So the next part of the code, we're going to give this variable some information to hold. We do that by using the equal sign, just like in math, we say local x equals 10. What this means is that we are assigning the number 10 to the variable x. This whole thing is called a statement. The semicolon at the end marks the end of that statement. And it tells the computer that there is a beginning and an end. It is almost like using a period in a sentence when you are writing in English. Now, before we go further, I want to mention that Roblox Studio doesn't require you to use semicolon to finish off the statement. So this statement can be easily written like this as well. I'm only showing you this because this is good coding practice you will often see the usage of this semicolon in other programming language. It is almost like wearing your shoes when you're going outside. You don't have to wear your shoes. There is no rules against it, but you should for the sake of protection. But in this case, I'm only using this because it makes code easier to read. 
So let's get back to our weapon variable practice and fill out the rest of the information for this wonderful weapon that we have created here. I showed you earlier how to put a number inside of a variable. So local weapon minimum damage equals 5, local weapon maximum damage equals 10. So now you have a weapon that has a minimum damage and a maximum damage. Now, however, for names and words, we have to describe the information differently. It is not number, it is a word. So we need to add double quotes to that piece of information, which tells the computer that this is a word or a phrase. So local weapon name equals firebrand sore. So now you know how to put two different pieces of information inside of a variable. So when it comes to creating a variable, this is really all you need to know. However, I want to throw in something extra because right now you only know how to create a variable. You don't know how to use that variable to present it to the audience. So the last thing I want to show you is how to use that variable so that you can present it to the audience. All you need to do is type print brackets, weapon name, print weapon minimum damage, print weapon maximum damage. Now I'm not going to go over why it works this way. This is another topic for another video. So for now, this is all you need to know. Now go back to the viewport, hit the play button, and you should see on your output window the information you have entered inside of your variable. And this is all you need to know how to use a variable and displaying that variable back to the audience. So let's recap what we have learned so far because there is a lot of information that I have thrown at you. So the first thing you learn is what a reserve keyword is. It is a word that has a purpose and a meaning for the computer and you shouldn't use it casually anywhere. Then you learn that a variable is a placeholder for one piece of information and that information can either be a number or a name or something. Then you learn how to put the information inside of a variable to create a complete statement. Then finally, you learn how to print it back out on the screen so your audience can see it. And this is how you use a variable. So thank you boys and girls for watching. If you find this confusing, don't hesitate to just comment below and ask questions. The only way you're gonna get better at this is to ask questions, do a lot of practice, and experiment a lot by yourself. So again, thank you boys and girls for watching, and I'll see you in the next video, in-game, or at the Carol Club. Take care, everybody.